This NFL strength of schedule and FCS college football championship edition of the sports gambling podcast is presented by win bet. Get started today and you'll get a risk-free bet up to $500 terms and conditions apply. Get the details at W Y N N bet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by Roman. Roman is the straightforward way to take care of your ED. Just head to getroman.com slash SGP for $15 off your first month. Let's get Roman.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is home to the Best Ball Mania 2 contest where you can win $1 million. That's right, $1 million. Sign up now at underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN. We're also brought to you by Odds Jam. Odds Jam is the betting tool every sharp better needs, bringing you the latest prices and presenting the best betting opportunities. Dominate the marketplace with Odds Jam. Use promo code SGP and get 5% off. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Odds Jam. Welcome, everyone, to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Sean, we're in midseason form. It's football, 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 football. Leading, leading up to a weekend. Let's F it. I mean, it's one of these things, right? We were talking about it. Like, hey, should we talk more NFL on Friday? Why should, not? Is it football okay to talk? Friday. Is it okay to talk more NFL on Friday? Yes, it okay. is okay. We are going to be. You think talking. the fans will be okay with it? Yeah, I think th- I think they'll be all right. They'll get by. We're going to be talking Let's, national five football months league. away, four months away. What are we going to do? <laughs> then we're going to be talking about college football, the FCS college football championship, where of course we're going to be crowning a winner in the FCS college football bracket championship challenge, something like that. We're giving away five hundred bucks. We're gonna have a winner. We're also gonna have a winner again of the FCS college football spring season. All that's coming up. We're gonna talk NFL strength of schedule. Get into that. So much to talk about. So much to think about. Our NFL Week One lines, where we pick every NFL game against the spread. That is out. Which, which by the way, Sean, I am up to three games. Three games wagered already <laughs> on May Fourteenth, Twenty Twenty One. Well, we're gonna get to sixteen. I know it already. And as soon as the DFS. Uh, prices are released. I'm going to spend time carving a different Millie Maker lineup for every NFL team. I can't wait. NFL is almost here, and by almost, I mean uh, four months away. Doesn't mean we're not well, going to Sh- talk about Sean. It. Hold on, mini camps are happening right now. You're right. So football is happening right now. We got guys in shorts, in jerseys, without pads on. Football season is here. And of course, betting season is always here over at the sports gambling podcast.com, SGPN. And winning season, it's all the time over at winbet.com, W Y N N bet.com. Download the app today, head over there, get a special offer, a risk free bet up to 500 bucks. Terms and conditions apply. Again, they got it all over at WinBet. Nice little parlay boost. Win bet. It's all about bringing the win experience from Las Vegas into the palm of your hands. W Y N N bet.com. Head over there right now. Download the app today. Get in NFL action, win totals, futures. They got it all. Even the college football championship for the FCS. W Y N N bet.com. Joining us on the line from the sports betting dime, editor in chief Matt McEwen. Matt, uh, appreciate you calling in, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for talking NFL with us. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, appreciate it. And I, I came across your article. We we're talking a little bit as uh, strength the schedule when the schedule release happened. We already did our way too early <laughs> week one NFL lines subject to possible change, but just reacting. <laughs> Instantly, just chomping at the bit, and we always see those uh, strength to schedule articles come out of. Oh, this team has the easiest strength to schedule, and we've always kind of laughed some of those off because they a lot of times, or at least the traditional way of breaking down strength to schedule was just to count up how many wins the team won the previous year. That obviously isn't a great way to do it. Uh, you wrote up a great article over at Sports Betting Dime kind of uh you know a new way to look at strength the schedule and and walk us through kind of uh your your mindset there 
Yeah, that old method is so horrible, right? Like we, we why why did we let that fly for so long? I, I, we didn't know any other I, I way. <laughs> you know, so I, I agree with the guy. It, it's horrible. Um, you know, at, at sportsbettingdime.com, we are we're really focused on the better, right? And and I want to do things in in different ways, break away from these, you know, somewhat ugly traditional methods and provide better, better metrics. And strength of schedule is one place where where I have found a lot of value here. Um, you know, as you guys said, things just change year to year, right? I mean, you're, you're telling me right now that we should be looking at the 49ers as a six and 10 team this year. Like, I don't think so. Right. Let's say Aaron Rodgers leaves the Packers. Are we going to still consider them a, a 13 win team? There's no way. Right. So I, I, I like to do this based off of uh, NFL win totals. I think this is the, the most accurate method out there. Um, you know, just playing around with this a few years ago, um, started kind of, you know, crunching some numbers like this and things made a lot of sense, uh, in, in kind of the trial runs. And, you know, I, I kept kind of going a little further with it and, and here we are, you know, I'm, I'm a few years into this now we've experienced quite a bit of success with it. So, you know, basically all I'm doing here is I, I'm taking every team's opponents, adding up, taking the sum of their opponents, win totals. And of course, you know, the teams with the highest sums, uh, would have the toughest schedules teams with the lowest have the easiest schedules. So I, I much prefer this method over anything else I've seen, you know, of course, every method comes with its own flaws, but I find this one to be the most, uh, most bulletproof. I mean, Sean, who you want to trust Chris Berman and Tom Jackson or <laughs> Vegas on this one? Well, I, don't, I don't, I never want to besmirk uh, the great name of Chris Berman, but yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and a great example is my Philadelphia Eagles. If you mm. look at the traditional a win uh, strength to schedule way of calculating it. They have the easiest schedule, but then if you look at the win total strength of schedule, it's still pretty good. Uh, but they're sitting at the 18th easiest instead of the easiest, which you have as the 49ers facing a 138.2, a projected uh, win total based on their 2021 opponents. Some of the hardest uh, teams, according to win total strength of schedule, Las Vegas Raiders. Oh, the Raiders have a t- murderous schedule. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. The Steelers, the Houston Texans, who I keep looking at that uh, that win total line and and <laughs> kind of being a. Uh, we always like to look at at going under on the highest win totals and taking the over on some of the lowest. Just you know, with the idea of like a lot of time it gets too inflated one way or the other. The Texans, I mean. The line I've never seen it so low. Some places have it at three and a half wins, and this is in a seventeen game know, season. Jesus. But now you look at the the win total that they're facing. I, I don't know, Teddy Bridgewater. We'll we'll see. But it, it's it's really great to kind of check Tyrod this Taylor, out. Tyrod Taylor, please, sorry, Sean, Ted- don't do not disrespect <laughs> my man Tyrod. Tyrod. Now, uh, one question that jumps out at me is like, what are some of the biggest? I kind of mentioned the Eagles as as one is the weakest, but then only 18th. If you look at win total, are there a couple other outliers that they're, you know, you may think they have a easy win totals or sorry, easy win schedule. But when you look at the win totals, it's not so easy or, or vice versa. Um, You know what I've seen, you mentioned with, with the Eagles there, they were the big one that, that, uh, that stood out. Um, but yeah, like to, to be honest, the, the Texans were one that I've seen in some other models that people are saying don't have that difficult to schedule. And I'm not really sure where those numbers, like where they're gathering their numbers. Anyway, I look at the Texans like this, this is going to be tough. Um, but St- Steelers were another one to me that, that stood out. This is in, in my model, much, uh, you know, much more difficult than I've seen in, in other models. Um, th- those are kind of the ones that, that jumped out to me anyways. It is surprising to see teams like the Raiders and teams like the Texans have like a clear disadvantage in their own divisions. Well, yeah, and some of that is the obviously how good they are relative to their division, but it still doesn't make you feel good, right? Like as a Giants fan last year, walking into the a year where <laughs> a lot had to go right, and then you look at the schedule, and it's just like Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm out. Now, just and, tap and me the, in next the, year. And if you're just kind of looking at it on the surface level, you think, oh, Texans, they were really bad last year. They were four and twelve. They're gonna have to have an easier schedule this year, but then when you look at the win total, it's just it's just not there uh, for a for a number of reasons. 
Now, kind of on the easy end of the schedule, like we said, 49ers, the easiest Cleveland Browns, uh, a close second there. Broncos are up there. And even the Tampa Bay Bucks, who <laughs> they won the Super Bowl last year, you would think, okay, Super Bowl chance, they're going to have a hard schedule. According to the win total strength Tom Brady. Of schedule, he's fixed. He's in with the NFL <laughs> they, again. They, they got Tom Brady's back. And they their 29th easiest schedule. That's pretty crazy. We've taken a look at kind of we've kind of been tracking the <laughs> the win total market. It seemed like between uh looking at the win totals pre-draft and then post-draft, it seemed like most teams kind of went up. Uh have you seen any sort of movement uh, on the win totals at all regarding the schedule? Or e- even to that point, Looking at this now, win total strength of schedule. Does that help you form any sort of opinion on maybe some of these win totals that you didn't you didn't think about coming into it? Uh, yeah. So, so a, a couple of the changes that that I did notice made after schedule release. Um, there there were some books that had the Chiefs at twelve. Um, just, you know, their their win total was just twelve. Which I'm saying just twelve because <laughs> you know, this, this is a team winning thirteen games in a sixteen game schedule. And, yeah, and you know now you're adding an extra game and saying they're still only you know setting them at twelve. So I, I've seen just about every book now move them up to twelve and a half, which you know I will say I still think is is too low for for this team. <laughs> yeah, I mean um, it still means they have to lose four games, and you're sorry yeah. they can lose four games and still hit the over. Yeah. It, it, to me, like it's uh, th- this Mahomes led team is just too good. And, you know, they've revamped the O line. They, they stand out to me right now as uh, you know, someone who's not jumping out on my chart, but I, I do look at that win total and say, you know, th- this is just still too low. Uh, another, another team that, that I saw move uh, the bucks were one actually too. And, you know, I'm sure Tom Brady salivating over this schedule. It's kind of <laughs> drew in some, some money there, but they, they were at 11, same thing. They moved up to 11 and a half now. Uh, I've seen the Titans move down to nine at some books. So not, not a ton of big movement based off the schedule release, but uh, some, some little bits where you're seeing some, some money come in obviously. And, you know, after, after seeing the the schedule get released um, th- th- there are a couple teams to me that just have some really difficult stretches. Um, you know, what I, I like to actually take this model too and, break it into first half, second half as well. So, you know, now in this 17 game season, we don't, have I know a you can't have a nice, even eight and eight and they mess up the it's quadrants off. as well. I know it. <laughs> I uh, it's <laughs> and for as much as we love this extra game. It, it is. No, I be, know I'm, I'm torn weird, too. Right? It, it's I love the idea of extra football. I love an extra week of betting fantasy DFS, but then my brain, when no, I'm going through screw these, you guys, I like symmetry. <laughs> I know. I, I like, the, eight, right? <laughs> yeah. I like the nice, even an odd number schedule. It just, it, it is kind of annoyed the 17. Absolutely. So, you know, in, in breaking that, I, what I, what I did here is I, I have just assumed, you know, I've taken the first nine games as the first half of the season, last eight games, of the second half. Um, but some teams that stand out here, uh, specifically just, you know, for, for the difference in, in difficulty from one half to another, the Carolina Panthers have such an easy first half. And like, I'm, I'm talking like, like very, very easy. Um, <laughs> just from looking at their first half, the, the average wins. Sorry, I've got the number here. It's they, they face like it's like a seven win team basically in, in throat on average for their first nine games. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, on, you know, on, on the, the other side of it, you do have some teams with some, and, and again, sorry, just draw back that Carolina bet there. Like what, what does this open up to me? Part of me is considering and don't get me wrong. This is the Panthers. And this is why I'm still just considering it. And, and, you know, still in a, a bit of a tough division there with Tampa Bay and, and who knows what New Orleans is going to be this year. But um, I I'm debating taking the Panthers right now to make the playoffs and seeing if I can, uh, you know, hedge that bet going the other way, you know, maybe after week, week seven, week eight or so, once their schedule does start to get tougher. I mean, even, even if they were to open up, uh, you know, something like four and two, four and three or so these, these odds make the playoffs swing so uh, rapidly. They're so volatile week, week to week. Right. So I, I might sprinkle a little bit there and just try to open myself up for, for an opportunity to hedge later in the season. But again, 
kind of considering that one because it is still the Panthers. Sean, that's one of the things I've I've noted down because you know my New York Football Giants they end with four four out of six on the road, and you know that same similar kind of concept. You might be able to get a price on that to make the playoff that you can then sell out or move your position out. Obviously, I won't because I'm a I'm a homer (laughs) who's going all in in this situation. But I, I will say. I will say that I do think there are th- the other side of that coin is also very intriguing. The idea of having a team that starts off that tough and then just has a bit of a cakewalk. Now, obviously, there's confidence and there's momentum and things of that nature, but uh, some th- there are that would be the market I would be looking well, at yeah, here because I think for the most part the win totals are pretty efficient. We the one team I think the the book is out on is the Raiders. Like the Raiders to me truly moved a half. A win just based on the schedule when it came out, and uh, but 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 as we said, most other win totals and to make playoffs haven't really been adjusted too much. We've seen some some steam come in on the good teams, right? The Bucks when they when the world found out that the Bucks and the Chiefs catch the Giants at home on Monday Night Football, <laughs> they said, "All right, let's move that win total out, up a half point." But but I I think that's the angle, right? Like, and I also think we can expect to have. I think there's a good chance we have win total bets after each week. This well, year. yeah, and that's and that's a market that, I, and I was going to kind of hop in there with as as far as like talking overall NFL futures strategy. Normally, those markets really weren't available; they were tough to find as far as like each week an adjusted win total for the team, and that's why I. I Depending on the options, I would probably lean the make or miss playoffs because that's going to be something that'll probably be updated. But you're right. I, I think just the I don't way- know how I feel about this because it becomes that thing where then you get all the analytics community telling you you might as well just play the mechanical <laughs> part. You know, just play the wins out, just bet them every week. Yeah, and and yeah. So I, I don't know, but I, I do think though, like I like that uh, that idea of analyzing the schedule and kind of identifying those teams that come out of the gates tough. And sometimes Absolutely. it can it can be non schedule and injury related, like taking a look at how the Bengals start, considering that Joe Burrow might not be back, back or even, all the way, or even our buddy Dakota Rain Prescott, the <laughs> Cowboys. Yeah. He's coming off a massive injury. I think the Eagles, again, not to make it all about the Eagles, but the Eagles have a very tough six first games, but then their schedule gets pretty easy towards the end. Even they actually have the late by the latest possible by week 14. And then they have, it's a great example because it's the same situation. The giants were in last year, which is terrifying because if it starts bad, you know what the fans are going to do. It doesn't matter that the schedule gets easier. Yeah. And I think that's the part where you had kind of have to look a little deeper into the situation. Like is, is the team established like the saints, for example, could they handle starting off slow because it's explainable perhaps. Uh, hopefully the Eagles start well, off zero and six. And even even to that point, I, I think after the uh, after the Broncos game, uh, like November or sorry November fourteenth, they don't they don't travel really. I mean, they travel yeah. to the Giants and Jets and the Washington Football Team, but everything else is either at home or a bus ride. So, kind of looking at that travel schedule, those are interesting. So the Eagles honestly definitely seem like a team. If you're looking at overall win total, make to miss playoffs. Maybe you fade them early and then grab it late because they had they close out with a bye week and then three division home games, one division road game. So even if they're and I'm doing the math in my head, like five and eight or something like that, there's a you could talk yourself into making a little run here with these division games at home and uh, still maybe being in the mix for the playoffs. Uh, Matt, you also talk about not only like win total stuff or or just overall strength of schedule, but how it impacts. Uh, some of these other future bets. I know you kind of pulled some data on NFL MVP winners. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to jump back to one of your points there, guys, you, you mentioned the win totals. They they actually were available all last season. Uh, oh, they week, were okay. Up until, nice. uh, up until like week 15, 16, like they still had some available. Uh, we, we did. And again, I, I tracked that all year at sports betting dime.com. You can see uh, the, the progression from week to week throughout the entire season. And same, same thing as the make miss playoffs. These are volatile. Like if, you know, take for example, uh, the Indianapolis Colts last year, right. Who uh, everyone was, was big fans of them uh, coming into the season, Philip rivers. Right. And you know, they, they stink up the joint week one uh, lose to the Jags. <laughs> right. Yep. And their, their win totals dropped. They, they were as low as eight after that, that week one loss, right. Where they had, they had entered as high as about 9.5, nine, even right. 
So they, they, again, very volatile. Like there's, there's opportunity here to, you know, yeah. Pick on these kind of all year, but uh, yeah, like, like you were saying, you know, we, we do, we track all these futures all year, you know, whether it be Super Bowl, um, down right down to divisional uh, win totals, make miss playoffs and every, every player award uh, coach of the year as well in there. I'm a we, fan we of these. I'm a fan of these pages. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's good to see where I'm, things have come from, right? It. I was inspired to create my own NFL win tracker. Yeah, Google no. Sheet this, and, this and, season. And shout out, you guys do a ton of deep stuff too. And I remember when we were doing a research for conference tournament uh, for college basketball, you guys had some of the some like really first good, to market baby, really good breakdowns on some of these more. I, I know Colby would be uh, doesn't want me to insult these smaller <laughs> schools and smaller conferences, but. Uh, really, really have a ton of uh, good deep stuff. So make sure you check it out over sports betting dive, but yeah, sorry to, to get back to the, uh, the NFL MVP, you had an interesting nugget, basically breaking out the regular season wins for the last 10 NFL MVPs is 12.8. What, where did you kind of get that? I, I mean, obviously you got it from the one loss, but what do you, what do you think that helps you uh, when you come to formulating your bets? Well, you know, and I think this, this ties in strength of schedule here too, right? Like if you're, you know, you're, you're not winning MVP with an eight win, I guess now it's a, a nine and eight <laughs> team is what we got to say. But uh, you know, you, the, the, the MVP every year is generally the quarterback from the best team in the league, right? Uh, one of the best teams in the league. So yeah, you know, 12, 12.8 wins on average over the last decade for the MVP. So you know, I'm, I'm looking here and I've, I've been doing this for, for the last couple of years, just picking out these, these teams with these easier schedules who, again, you know, I, again, like I said, I'm not taking the Carolina Panthers. I'm not taking Sam Darnold to win MVP <laughs> just because the, the Panthers have an easy record doing this uh, intelligently, looking at the win totals, then taking a look at the strength of schedule as well, trying to figure out who, who are the real contenders here. Right. And for me this year, I, I have a really hard time betting against Patrick Mahomes. I know the price is, is uh, very short, but I have a really hard time trying to, to stack up an argument as to why Patrick Mahomes will not win this award. Yeah. And it seemed, it seemed pretty obvious in the super bowl, their weakness was the offensive line. Uh, they traded for a, a, another tackle. They seemed to address it in the draft as well. And just said, Hey, our offensive line sucked. We got to get that figured out. And yeah, I mean, who's I, who's fading Mahomes right I, now? I also like what I'm hearing in this is that maybe if I like a guy to win the MVP and I'm going to take that future, it's correlated to the win total, and I should also sprinkle a little bit on that team's win total. Perhaps a team that I know I'm going to be bullish on, the Atlanta Falcons. We've seen that win total go up, but if you think they're going to have one of those bounce back regression type, lost a lot of close game seasons, now they have a good offensive play caller. Could Matt Ryan be that dark horse? <laughs> they would have. It sounds like they're going to have to get to like maybe yeah. 11, 12, 13 wins. So if do you believe they can do that? Hey, that division again. Tom Brady almost lost to Taylor Heineke. Let's never forget that everyone's <laughs> crowning these bucks. Like, oh look, they got an easy schedule. They're coming anyway. I, I th- yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I'm I hear some correlated bets Ryan here and, and Arthur Smith in the offense. So I, I think they will still struggle with the defense to get the wins to keep them in in the mix there for MVP and and just you know in general there. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, this is certainly a fun way. Which, and- by the way, Kansas City over twelve and a half is plus one thirty. Yeah, you're getting plus odds. I, it's I unbelievable. I mean, look at the Chiefs' schedule. Look at the win total that they're facing, and give me five losses on this Chiefs well, team. It's, it's tough know, to get. To. Do you do you believe, like we've been told many times from friend of the program Alex Crouch, that the water in Kansas City <laughs> cures hangovers, and they once again won't have a Super Bowl hangover? I think I think they're going to be the opposite. I think they're going to have a chip on their shoulder from that that bad loss. And again, what Mahomes had never lost, or how many one score or when he, I saw his the losses that were more than one score, it was like crazy. I'll look. be honest. We've been on a relative heater as a brand, Sean. Yes. We it have. was a tough moment when I saw the schedule and the giants have to go to Kansas city. And <laughs> it's like, well, that's an automatic loss. Like what yeah, the fuck? I mean, Kansas city at home going to be so tough to anyway. beat. All right. Well, Matt, appreciate you calling in. And uh, of course, make sure you go to sports betting dime. Make sure you follow Matt on Twitter at SBD underscore Matt. And uh, give sports betting dime a follow on Twitter as well at SBD. Matt, appreciate the time and uh, best of luck with the picks. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, best of luck this season. 
Oh yeah, I want to shout out Underdog Fantasy. Man, so addicted to these uh, best ball drafts. Got one going in right now. I'm, I'm on the slow draft. We've done a bunch of the 30 second drafts. Kramer streams some uh, some drafts. Best Ball Mania Two is here, and uh, you got a chance to win one million dollars over at UnderdogFantasy.com. Use the promo code SGPN for your chance to win one million dollars. I also want to shout out Odds Jam. That's right. Odds Jam is my jam. And for Sharp Better, it should be your jam as well. They do the line shopping for you, finding the best price. Again, very simple. Just fire up the Odds Jam app, show you where to, and, you know, whatever betting market you're in, Odds Jam can help you out. Dominate the marketplace with Odds Jam. Even finds you some arbitrage opportunity where you can bet both sides, guaranteeing yourself. A profit. That wasn't enough. You can get five percent off when you use the promo code SGP. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds jam. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash odds jam. O D D S J A M. Joining us in studio, Kobe Dant, aka the Dant Base, here to talk F C S football. There's some video Kobe. magic there. But it, he just appeared. Uh, only one game. Poof. Only one only game. Only one left. game. All right. And then I start my countdown. I think it's what, like 106 days. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, by the time this game's played, it'll be what? I think 104 days until, until more college uh, football. Dry. Just yeah. Colby, are you planning on doing a, a game preview for every or a team preview? For all the college football teams, all 130 teams, and if you're real swift, you might check out a, a few FCS ones that might get in there too, man. Wow! So, wait, wait, yeah. no, you're not. Yeah, this was not approved. Yeah, <laughs> Wh- which FCS? Look, Imagine this, previewing 132 I, teams and going, you know, yeah. I feel like we haven't covered the sport it, enough. Yes, and and look, me and Sean were talking. We know your record was horrible, Kramer, yeah. but we think we're going to do a show next next year as well for FCS. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're we're going to get you the uh, Phil Steele catalog and everything. <laughs> all right, Just study you up. Keep the uh, uh, FCS heat going. Okay. What well, uh, Sean likes downloads too much for that to be a reality. <laughs> <laughs> the F line is also open. If you missed the, uh, the sketch that we put out, check it out at, at gambling podcast, but the F line is open anytime day or night between now and when <laughs> the FCS college football championship kicks off, call the F line three, two, three, five, six, one, three, zero, five, two, three, two, three, five, six, one. Three zero five two to talk college football with the database. Throw that in your phone too, just and to see what happens when your wife finds yes. it. Yes, and if you called me last week, Jake I, from State Farm. <laughs> who is this F line you've been <laughs> calling at one a.m.? Uh, and if you called me last week, I, I my bad, I didn't pick up. I thought it was a bill collector. Well, and I'll say this: if uh, if anyone's filling out an application where they have to leave an emergency contact. And you know, not for like a real thing where you might get injured, but if you're like, you know, sometimes you're at a gym and they make you leave an emergency yeah. contact. Like, now, you now, know, I always leave nine one one as my emergency contact because, I mean, really, if I if I collapse at the gym, <laughs> do you want to call my wife? No, yeah, call the fucking yeah. ambulance. It's a non-emergency contact. So if you're, yeah. si- if you're signing your kid, you don't, up- wait, hold on. You really write nine one one? Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> People, f- yeah. No, I, I've never that's, thought to. T- that's my emergency contact. I would. I, I guess I'm implicitly assuming that people understand to call nine one one first, well, and then my emergency contact. I mean, but I like your your bluntness to let them know. Once that's I the- once I come to or am alive, I can call my wife. She's not. She's not gonna. What is she gonna cut me open and find? So the, wait, uh, if you fall into a coma, they don't call her. So she has no idea for a couple of weeks. She thinks she, you know. Yeah, you, she'll be she's fine. She's, think you left her. Assume I'm watching. Uh, you know, 1990 Eagles game on YouTube <laughs> against the Dolphins at the office. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, but you- I, I'm encouraging people. If you send us in a uh, a photo of you listing the F line three two three five six one three zero five two as your emergency contact, <laughs> I will hook you up with a free T-shirt. Definitely, definitely. I just want to get a call. That works for if you're signing your kids up for youth football too. You know, like yep. we saw that. We uh, saw that the Podesta yeah. local uh, youth football organization. Uh, we're calling to <laughs> validate a. Uh, a volunteer application, uh, yeah. Or if you want yeah. us to and and give us a heads up, maybe you're we're a job reference. 
Yeah. Uh, you're trying to get an apartment. We could be a former landlord. We're here to help you guys. F line is open. F line is open. We we run the triple option. Can the F line sponsor <laughs> uh, a youth sports team potentially? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they want that. The F line uh, written all over their jerseys. <laughs> the Little Oakland Athletics brought to you by the F line. All about it. The Slick Oakland Bam. Fs. All right, let's talk uh, talk about it. FCS college football. Also. We will be giving away five hundred dollars cold no. hard cash. It is down to two. It, it's basically down to two contestants, right, Colby? Where are we at? Yeah. Um. So we to have stall Colby. I'm working for you over here. No, oh, no. We got Sam Houston State. Go Bearcats is uh, number one, twenty one points. He's in the lead, and uh, then we got Matt in second place. What was the last name again? Vazer. Vazer. Yes. Matt Vazer. I think those are the only two. Cause uh, well, actually I think I might've screwed up Colby because oh, they both Keith, have Sam Houston state. Yeah. Keith actually in nine has 19 uh, with South Dakota state. So there will be one after this. It will either be our own very own. I mean, who knew we have a D gen also a Sam Houston state fan uh, almost feels like this was, only. this was destiny for the Sam Houston team to go on this run. Uh, and then Keith on the South Dakota side kind of feel like South Dakota state is the Darth Vader in this matchup. Mm. They are the, the bad guy, Evil empire, the powers from the Dakotas. But look, if Keith, if South Dakota state wins, he gets four points. That means he wins. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, saying, yeah, we got three so, people there. Well, no too, because Sam Houston state wins the, the other guy can't pass. Go oh, Bearcats. You're right. So you're right. Go Bearcats yeah. locks it up. If his, sorry, Matt, which <laughs> is pretty horrible because you know, I, I, there's nothing worse than losing in your heart and then losing in your, what do you, what do we call it nowadays? Dudes don't have wallets anymore. They have like purses, your so, BTC, uh, your BTC <laughs> wallet. Well, yeah. We'll just go with crypto wallet. All right. Uh, recap the final four Delaware got destroyed <laughs> South Dakota state. Not even a game. Uh, South Dakota was state that? way too physical. 33 to three Delaware went up three, nothing too. first two <laughs> drives. I was like, Oh yeah, we got this before Henderson went down. But I'll be honest, even if Henderson, you know, uh, his mobility was, was key, but at the same time that O line and that D line were getting fucked up by the Jack rabbits. They would have lost. They could have had Jerry rice playing wide receiver for, uh, for Delaware. They would have lost. And the and the brain trust over at Dr. Pepper thinking, wow, we look pretty smart. This playoff resulted in one crappy game in the final four as well. So yeah, I mean, but God, I watched, I watched the highlights. Cause I was like, all right, these guys are going to make fun well, of me. Well, the next game was one of and the I best games, see, but Delaware, yeah, it, an yeah. I, it turns yeah. out Delaware. I shouldn't have listened to you. Oh, they, really? they weren't up to the, they weren't up to the challenge from the Dakotas. <laughs> Colby's blue hens got put in the shed. Blue hens, they made Take it, it out close, the, the woodshed, got their heads chopped off. What was off. it? Plus 2,500. It got to the final four. You know what I mean? James Madison was a one and a half point favorite, a road favorite as they went down to Huntsville, Texas against Sam Houston state got out to a 24 to three lead in the fourth quarter. The game seemed over. It happened in like five plays. Nobody circles the wagons like Sam Houston state pulled out a miraculous, insane they, victory. They got 21 points in like five or six plays. It, yeah. it was really unbelievable. Like it, it did remind me. I mean, the only game you can compare it to is bills Oilers in that play. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's another playoff game where it was just the, and I think that was actually 35 comeback. to three. Yeah. 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 I mean, but this one and that was, was just, that was no two point conversions either. That was free two point <laughs> conversion. You forget. And that was like an entire second half. This happened like in the all in the fourth quarter. Can Crazy. we talk about like Sam Houston state has uh, just the golden horseshoe up their ass. Yeah. I mean, like some of those breaks, like the kick that went deep and bounced back towards the, uh, Towards the you know where you're kicking off, sometimes that, that rarely sometimes, happens. You know, you know. Well, so. and then yeah, this brings us to the game. Sam, South Dakota State is a five and a half point favorite. Sam Houston State getting the five and a half total, sitting at forty seven. Neutral field, Frisco, Texas, fifty percent chance of rain. I keep going back Love and it. forth in my head, handicapping this. Neutral because, field, outdoors, yeah, baby. Neutral football. field, outdoors, real football. Part of me wants to think, oh, Sam Houston State, that was their Super Bowl. This was a dramatic, emotional, o- almost like the same thing in the um, national championship game for basketball. And this is just going to be a letdown spot for Sam Houston State. But Sam Houston State keeps winning like this. Like yeah. this game was a bit of an outlier, but it hasn't been an outlier as far as their season. Like they they've had a number of games. And even the the North Dakota State game, like games they probably should have lost. Uh, the Monmouth they just, game, Monmouth's receiver Monmouth. drops the ball in the end zone. If they and if he scores and they make an extra point, they lose. I mean, th- like this team, yes, they played good 
at, at spurts in all of all three games. But man, I, they, I just they've just had like, some real yeah. hot and cold moments. J- but they keep figuring out ways to win. Nine and zero, South Dakota State eight and one. JMU's kicker had missed a field goal all year. Yeah, yeah. Until that. sometimes you just have it all coming together. What would scare me? And it it, it is the classic, uh, you know, matchup of the finesse team of Sam Houston State versus the power physical style of South Dakota State. Although Sam Houston State, uh, interesting Nuggets. They haven't allowed an opposing 100 yard rusher in their last 20 games. Their run defense is pretty strong. Um, of course, their pass game has really been nice. Schmidt is just putting up 300 yard games left and right. They got the receiver, Azard, Jaquez Azard. He's averaging 26.9 yards per catch with seven touchdowns. That's and that, insane. And believe it or not, that average, uh, Ezard, by the way, but uh, I Ezard. think he was getting about 32 yards a catch a couple of weeks ago. So that average went slightly down. down. Still unbelievable. And this guy was really the, the, the real catalyst in this comeback. He had about an 80 yard punt return for a touchdown. Uh, and that was, you know, kind of what started that momentum. But another thing is special teams. You go back to that uh, North Dakota state game, they gave up a uh, the North Dakota State blocked the Sam Houston State punt. They had a kick return and a punt return for a touchdown. I was calling for the special teams coach to be fired, but last week answered the call. Ezard had an 80 yard punt return for a touchdown or something like that. Well, and and one of the teams that uh, South Dakota State faced that had a really good passing offense is uh, the Salukis and Stone Lebanowitz, yes. and they were they they really should have won that game. Definitely they threw for 316 passing yards against South Dakota State, and that was in South Dakota State. Now that was a bit of a letdown spot for South Dakota state. We were all over the Salukis and the points there, but man, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm keep going back and forth. I think I'm going to lean Sam Houston the, state. Where do you, what are your thoughts? Kramer? Isn't there an angle here where like there's something battle tested about Sam Houston state. Like sometimes yeah. these teams go on these runs, whether you look at the bucks, even last year, uh, my giants and any sort of playoff <laughs> or of course I'm going to bring it up your Eagles, Sean, Yeah, there you go. they, they, they win games that seem in impr- something improbable. My happens. 69 jets, your 69 jets, <laughs> nice. things come together and, and they get to the finish line. And by the way, let me take you into the advanced analytics room, Sean, 13 hours and 37 minutes. That's how long it's going to take it to drive from South Dakota down to Frisco. Mm. Meanwhile, my boys over at Sam Houston State. I hope I'm not jinxing them for Go Bearcats. Uh, Less no. than three hours away. That definitely matters. See, yeah. the, the only thing the the Bearcats have going against them is Kramer, of course, being on them. And mm, that's tough. I, I worry <laughs> where the game could switch is again if if it's like a torrential downfall, they have trouble throwing the ball or. And we saw this in the uh, Southern Illinois uh, game. Is Gronowski, the quarterback for South Dakota State, if he decides, I, I got to put the team on my back, I'm just going to run over some dudes. He's get, I mean, he's yeah. got, he's hard to tackle. He is a, he is a thick, he's just a <laughs> thick ass quarterback. Dude, I mean, this run game. I mean, you do not want to ta- tackle Gronowski. And this run game has just been so dominant. Gronowski getting seven yards a carry. He has an eighty yard touchdown on the season. Yeah. Um and he's y- not he's not like Michael Vick. He's just, he's like a fullback that yeah. can kind of throw the ball. Their passing offense not amazing, but again, they do have Pierre Strong, who I think is gonna be a key in the factor. NFL. Yeah, a, a key factor. And a in big this factor game. in this game. Yeah, I mean the, the run game in general, Davis Strong and Gronowski, even Meacham after that. But um I, I think the fact that you know, they, they run a lot of the option read, which really makes you be patient as a defense. So uh, that's going to be the real test. I think they're going to have, I think they're going to be able to have success on the ground because that opens up their passing game. Then they got the, uh, the janky brothers. So, uh, and, and Pierre strong second on the team in receptions. Um, I know the, the guy's a machine Kramer. Do you, you said you had a prop bet you wanted to hit on? Oh, well, I mean, you didn't need to set it up. I was going to crowbar it in later, but oh. if you do, want to hear about it. There are some props out there. If you look long and hard for some reason, shout out to those who have joined us during the, uh, the quarantine <laughs> on the Madden Sims, but Sim gods. we learned one thing odd is sharp. And in the FCS championship game, odd currently sitting at minus one fifty. <laughs> love it. Oh so I can God. get plus odds on even yeah. <laughs> give me even baby. Like what? All right. I understand. Like maybe Again, coming back to the game itself, Sean. Though I, I do think you look at the fact that there is something to getting through. Don't care on the year. North Dakota State and JMU, two perennial powerhouses. They've beaten the two best teams. So to your point, 
there could be some letdown opportunity, but they've already gone through the two best. Why not hit number three? No, I know, and and that's kind of where I'm going. Is they've already they've gotten through all this, and yeah, they're it just feels like they're gonna finish it off. Colby, I just remember we bet on uh, baseball for a, for the afternoon game and totally forgot to watch it. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, is it, I think it's uh, yeah. Oh, you know uh, uh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, it, it hasn't started yeah, yet. Yeah. We still got time. That's awesome. I got you covered here with our. With Sean our, thinks it's later in the day. Me, we're doing me a and Stack and the Money Green have been <laughs> oh, on we, fire. We recorded. Yeah. yeah, we recorded part of it earlier, part of it later. Time threw is off, a... threw off my. It's <laughs> it's used to be a flat circle. It's not a flat circle mm. anymore. Has some ripples in it. All right, lock it up for me. Sam Houston State plus five and a half. Don't be afraid to sprinkle a little on that money line. Hope uh, hope they bring home the championship to go Bearcats. Feel free to parlay that with even. Mm. Colby, what are you doing? Clean sweep. Are we all Sam Houston State? I, I'm taking the only three hour drive. Not even three hour. I think two hours and forty five minutes. And uh, and yeah, Sam Houston State getting five and a half now. Give me the points. I think South Dakota State gets the win though. Give me a give me a, a thirty four oh, okay. thirty one. So not yeah. on the money line. Yeah, no. I like them with the points on the money line. Oh, no. But the what I'll throw in there as my lock is Sam Houston State over ten points in the first half. Ooh, uh, okay. The the real lock is taking the over forty seven points, guys. I understand the Seems rain low, is a threat. Right? The maybe that's the rain, <sighs> but that's, it's it's only ten and a half first half points. Ten. Okay, ten. Wow, that's low. For and the spread's forty-seven. Twelve and a half yeah. is the South Dakota State uh, first half team total. Ten is the same Houston. Yeah, throw State. me throw me on that a yeah, little bit. And, I'll take and, that too. Yeah. And forty-seven as well. I might take yeah. the first half money line too. I think Sam Houston State jumps out to a to, to a head start. I mean, like they know they have to get out in front, right, Colby? Yeah, you agree? For, like that's forty-seven is too low, man. You would think even if it's in the rain. Well, I'm not a totals guy. Yeah. First half totals though. Talk to me. I, I'm I'm not gonna get. I I like the over, but again, my locks are Sam Houston State plus five and a half, small sprinkle on the money yeah. line dog, and even lock it up. Yeah. <laughs> always fade, always fade the sharp action on uh, odd. What is it Malcolm likes to say? The Sam Houston team's a talking horse. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> oh yeah, and make sure you check out our uh, Preakness podcast. We of course nailed the Kentucky Derby winner, Medina Spirit. We uh we get into the preakness with our horse racing expert and host of the MLB a gambling podcast, Malcolm Bam Ford. All right, guys. I think uh that'll do it for the podcast. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Go Bearcats, go. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>